behind the call. Um, if you're all able to introduce yourself uh, and your roles at Birmingham Contemporary Music Group, uh, it'd be great to kick us off. Hi, I'm Seb. I'm the Executive Director at Birmingham Contemporary Music Group. And I'm Nicole. I'm Head of Development. Perfect. Excellent. Um, and so at BCMG, um, what, what does your organisation do? Um, how, how do you operate um, as a NFP? Uh, so as um, uh, we're a Birmingham Contemporary Music Group, so we are a performing ensemble, so a small orchestra. Uh, and usually we would be performing uh, our home base in Birmingham and all over the world. And when we talk about contemporary music, what we're talking about really is classical music uh, that's uh, created today. Um, so we commission lots of composers. We have an extensive learning program where we work with young people and encourage them to compose and create music. Uh, and our ensemble is uh, top class professionals. So, um, yeah, the very highest standards of performance um, are, are what we normally do. Perfect. And, um, you know, obviously this year has been tough for a lot of charitable organisations. Um, in terms of uh, your kind of subsector then, you know, which is, you know, arts, cultures, performance um, and obviously music, you know, how, how do you see uh, um, COVID and how has that impacted the sector um, this past year or so? It's been enormous. Um, so when the first lockdown came in, all of our concert venues shut. We couldn't rehearse, record or perform. And uh, we were able to continue some activity when we had that dip in the summer uh, where the numbers were low enough for us to get out and start to do some activity safely. Um, but we are back um, back in lockdown at the moment. And so we aren't able to do as much as we can. Um, so the main difference for us is that when we are able to um, to do things at the moment, we are doing them on a much smaller scale and digitally. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's the that's the main change and shift that we've seen. Um, it, it has been also a different uh, delivery model for our learning team as well. So they have been producing lots of online resources, obviously. Mm -hmm. Lots and lots of parents suddenly also became uh, the uh, their, their teacher, and so um, there's been lots of things that we've been able to put out that um, people can use at home and uh, to make music and to to keep to keep learning there. Brilliant, and um, yeah, I, I think that's that echoes kind of what's been happening right across um, not just this sector, but you know across the world really is that shift to online, that shift to digital. Um, obviously, you use our um, charity website platform um, for that. So um, in terms of um, what you've learned throughout kind of the past 12 months, you know, clearly you, you've had to kind of adapt um, to this, this new home working uh, environment. But, um, you know, have been any kind of key takeaways? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think one of the, the biggest takeaway that will continue with us post COVID is a real transition to <clears throat> doing stuff digitally and working online. Um, so we've managed to, to stream concerts and do that for the first time with a um, ticketed audience um, and then things like that. Uh, a lot of our learning resources, as Seb mentioned, are proving to be really popular in lockdown. And whereas before our resources were geared more towards the teachers to implement in the classroom, we've shifted and made them more accessible for students to do at home. Um, so a lot of little things that are really increasing our reach and letting people engage more fully with our work and um, so we'll definitely keep doing that in the future cool and then in terms of changes of approach i think we we spoke um we spoke earlier about kind of uh, zoom calls with donors as being you know as another big shift as well as obviously the wider online communication so so how have those been going yeah, they've been going really well, actually. Um, we've got a really wonderful community of, of sound investors. Um, they're individuals who are really passionate about new music and they actually support um, new commissions. So they give a donation and enable us to commission new works that are then performed by our ensemble. Um, normally, when we have those world premieres, we get all of those donors together, we have a glass of wine, they meet the composer. Um, it's a really nice experience. And as you can imagine, that's become impossible. Um, so we've done things a bit differently. We've had some of our donors stream into rehearsals, which they've quite enjoyed. And, um, and because we've got donors from all over the country, um, it's enabled more of them to participate. Whereas coming up on a Thursday afternoon for a rehearsal would have been impossible for someone in London with a job. Now they're able to stream in on their lunch break. Um, and we've done that with um, 
like BCMG chats. It's like a, a Zoom session that we have with composers or different artists where instead of getting to chat over a glass of wine in person, they get to have a conversation over Zoom and really ask um, in-depth questions about the music, about their work, what they're doing next, and they've proved really popular. Excellent. Um, so, so what's the future look like for you then? Because, um, you know, naturally we we will change back to this kind of new norm, but I'm just curious if there's any uh, changes you've implemented that you think may kind of be permanent or uh, if you're just kind of hoping when possible to kind of get back to how things were. Well, from my perspective, I think we're going to keep almost everything that we've implemented from the de development side um, and have a hybrid model. So we'll still have our in-person events, um, but we'll also have online things so that people who can't come in person can still participate and engage. And um, and I think I think it'll be a really great new model and new way of doing things. Perfect. Um, so how important is um, is fundraising to to you as an organization then? It's it's really quite important. I mean, we wouldn't be able to do our work without um, without philanthropic funds. Um, you know, as you can imagine, I think with all classical music in particular, the income that you get from your ticket prices never comes close to the cost of putting on a performance. Um, and that's definitely the case with us as well. Um, we're really fortunate to have an Arts Council England um, National Portfolio Organization grant, and that really provides a lot of our core funding. Um, but looking for additional funding from trusts and foundations is critical. The funding we get from our individual donors, particularly for sound investment, is something we could do without and um, and I think we've been really heartened over the past year that our, our donors especially our individual donors have really stepped up and um, we've had a few um, individual giving campaigns one um, for BCMG at home that really helped us kickstart the transition to a lot of this digital work um, commissioning solo pieces and performances that were premiered online for the first time. Um, and then this uh, September, we did another campaign for learning, celebrating our 20th anniversary of learning activities. And, um, and they went really well. Both of them were matched campaigns. And I think having that incentive to, to have their donation matched worked, worked quite well. And, um, and thank you and the website that's linked to it were critical in, in helping us achieve those goals. Perfect. Um, yeah, that's that, that's that's excellent to hear, actually. And and um, the CRM itself. Thank you, CRM. You know, uh, how how's that um, been helping you in terms of um, uh, your your fundraising goals? It's been really useful, um, especially now that we're able to link it directly to the website and, and have all of those donations and interactions go right into the system. Um, we're able to do a lot more planning um, that's much more thoughtful because we can pull the data out of thank you in a much easier way, um, really get an idea of, of who's given, when they've given, how much. Um, you know, we, we kind of knew after the first campaign that having the match really made a difference, um, but we were able to pull out some information from thank you about really how many new people donated that hadn't before um, things like that and so it's it's definitely been helpful and it's something that we're going to continue to learn and um, and figure out how to use even more effectively in the future cool perfect and um the the actual upgrade itself so you've been a thank you customer for some time but um you decided to transition to the cloud version of, of thank you crm um last year so um what made you decide to upgrade thank you well uh we took the decision to upgrade um, soon after the first lockdown. Um, we'd been working on Thank You 8 uh, for quite a long time and um, by that point and so it was um, sort of a legacy system and it was installed and hosted at our offices um, which was causing some serious connection issue and it was just holding things up um, so it was it was sorted to the point where um, we, we weren't able to use it to its fullest extent as we once were able to. Um, and so, um, yeah, I, I got in touch with you as our account manager and said, how can we how can we make this better? I know that you've you've got uh, you've been working on this um, and that there's a new version. And um, I remember just having those product demos and just seeing loads of functionality that had been built in, all of it accessible from any device that we needed to um, and all of it. Uh, securely hosted in the cloud was a massive um, uh, advantage for us because it also removed some of the risks that we were having about holding uh, customer data uh, securely on site. Um, so it removed the risk from us as an organisation too. So uh, there were a lot of 
positive uh, aspects to uh, Thank You CRM that we wanted. And Nicole's already touched on the fact that it integrates with uh, our website system, which is also an access product. And so it means that there's a really smooth um, customer journey um, from taking the decision to donate to BCMG um, to then being stewarded through a scheme like uh, Sound Investment to then being uh, uh, invited to something like a BCMG chat on Zoom with a composer from New York. You know, it, it, mm -hmm. it's a really smooth process now, uh, whereas before it was uh, quite clunky and um, we were having to do a lot of that uh, data migration ourselves, um, frankly, through spreadsheets and things, which is never what you want to do. Yeah, I know there's been a lot of administrative cost savings and time savings for sure and um, with the the donation side of things but also with the with the ticketing as well because now we have most of our tickets being purchased through our website and so with them linking together it's just made it so much easier and for me as head of development i can see who's come to which concerts and really get a much better picture of of the donor before i talk to them mm -hmm. yeah That's i mean fun. just as an example uh, i um, I took the opportunity when the first lockdown ended to go um, uh, camping and I realised that I hadn't yet uh, sent, set our MailChimp campaign uh, up properly and um, so I was able from my mobile phone to completely set up a MailChimp campaign and, and send that from a field in the Cotswolds. So that is definitely not something I would have been able to do before we upgraded. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Incredible. So um, in terms of the transition itself, uh, how was your experience then upgrading? Extremely easy. Um, I, the the um, customer service that we received was exemplary. Um, we had a really knowledgeable um, a developer working with us all along the way and we opted to have a number of training sessions which were really, really useful. Um, so we got not only um, a really thorough um, uh, process um, covered with somebody that knows all of the ins and outs of the system, um, but we got somebody who was really used to actually using the system, take us through all the processes that we would need to use. Um, I have to say as well, we, we had an effectively off the shelf uh, version of Thank You CRM and it completely meets all of our needs, whereas previously we had had to have functionality developed in uh, Thank You 8. Perfect. Um, and so I, I know you've touched on kind of a few of these points earlier, but in terms of you know the, your wider team that that you work with and that utilise, thank you. You know how how has the upgraded version benefited them? Um, my employee absolutely loves it. He's finding it so much easier to to get the data in to pull it out. Reporting is a lot simpler. Um, so yeah, I know we're finding it to be a much easier system to use for sure. Excellent. Um, and then just out of curiosity then, um, you know, why, why was it that you chose to work with Access? Um, you know, did, did you kind of review other solutions on, on the market as part of this process? Yeah, I mean, one of the big um, advantages for us was the uh, already being a thank you customer and already having um, our website um, through you. It meant that the um, uh, there, there was no cost comparison um, that could that could meet it with the data migration kind of cost that there would have been moving to any other system. Uh, we did look at other systems to double check, um, but yeah, it was it was largely um, uh, also that the actual functionality was going to be so uh, similar to what we were also used to working with. Yeah. But we were removing all of those manual processes too. Um, those that that would have meant adding to those processes had we not been able to, because obviously there's a limited number of um, integrations that are going to work with any particular system. This one worked across all of the systems that we were used to using. Um, and so, as I say, our our process is typically that a customer comes onto our website, has an interaction on there where they purchase a ticket or make a donation, and then we need to understand um, and take all that customer's information and then work with them to, to give them uh, the experience that they are expecting, either stewardship as a donor or um, the customer service that is um, required for an event attendance. Um, all of that can be done through the solution that we have with the website and uh, thank you CRM. And it was going to be tough for anybody to come close to that. Incredible. Cool. Well, thank you both for your time. I think that's been really, really insightful um, and, and hopefully uh, 
uh, for, for those who are interested in, in exploring Thank You CRM or our website piece, this is, you know, really informative as well as kind of, um, you know, increasing all of our knowledge of, of the NFP sector and, and particularly the arts and culture subsector and, and, and what's going on in, in that space at the moment. So um, thank you both for, for your time um, and uh, I look forward to, to catching up soon.